seniors and parents of seniors, welcome to this presentation on transitioning from high school to college. During this presentation, I hope to cover the uh, academic and especially the social emotional challenges that face students and their families as they transition from high school to college. This is a major milestone in a person's life and not just for that person who's doing the transitioning, the, the student, uh, but also for the parents and by extension, the family. This is a big change in family dynamics. Students, you've been going uh, to school for the last 13 years, not counting even preschool before that possibly. And every year you knew exactly where you were gonna go and uh, what each day was gonna be like for the most part. And now you're gonna go off to college, uh, whether you live at home or go to campus and things are gonna be different. And so I wanna take the time to go over some of those differences, uh, talk about some of the hard facts of, of the stresses and, and other mental health challenges that students do face so that you know that it's, it's real, it's common, but there are ways of course to stay healthy uh, while we're at school and finish off with some great interviews with a variety of people to get you some different perspectives on what they see uh, and have experienced each day. So we'll hear from an alum, from a parent, and from a couple of individuals, uh, professionals at the college level, who are all gonna offer some great insight, great advice, and some tips to help this transition be as smooth as possible. All right, so you might be sitting there saying, come on, it's still school. Like what could be so different that causes all these different academic and social emotional stresses you know high school was stressful I got through it how different can college be it's it's still school but the reality is that for some students especially the transition from high school to college can be a shock and taking from a video that I'm going to play for you in a second uh, a great quote that kind of sums a lot of it up that you'll see it says a new environment can create new challenges everybody's super excited to go to college and of course I was as well but I had no idea that transition from high school to college would be so difficult I think the first sign for me was I was super tired I was just so tired every night every day I just wanted to sleep things got more hectic I got more anxious and depressed being in a new place one night I was like I don't want to be here I don't want to be just in this world anymore. There was one day when I went back to my apartment that I really felt like I was going to do something bad to myself. And so I contacted a uh, behavioral center and I ended up going there for two days. Going to the behavioral center ended up being a positive experience for me because that's when I started going on medication. Going to counseling kind of helped me understand why I was cutting and what else I could be doing, you know, instead of self-harming. I absolutely think that the combination of therapy and medication can be really, really good. You don't have to be a completely new person just because you go to college. Like the things and the baggage that you had in high school they might come with you to college and that's totally okay. Like you don't have to be the perfect person. There is a science behind depression um, and it's not just something that, you know, you make up in your head, it's very real. So I wanted to play that quick video, not to scare anybody or worry people too much or anything like that, but to just make sure that everyone understands that the uh, mental health challenges that students can face on college campuses is a real thing. Real students are expressing real concerns and, and there's a variety of levels of it, of course, but uh, we wanna make sure that our students go off to campus healthy and they stay healthy and whatever we can do from now to kind of uh, make both students and parents aware uh, of this, this situation, this possibility, and we wanna be able to do that. And so now I'm gonna talk about 
uh, some of the factors that can lead to stress. Like we talked, we said it's different, but what is really so different about it? All right, so let's take a look at some of the differences about uh, high school versus college. And we can break them down into these different areas, classes, teachers, tests, grades, and the thing that a lot of students look most forward to, but but can also cause a lot of stress is personal freedom. And that can also apply to parents and their stress and worry about their students' newfound personal freedom uh, where they're not living under the roof possibly anymore and don't really you know, know maybe where they are or, or how they're doing all the time. So parents, you know, it's exciting when your students start growing up and start adulting, let's say, but it can also be, again, scary and, and nerve wracking for everybody. So what's the first thing to take a look at? Let's look at classes. So uh, in high school, as you all know, you are recommended for class by a teacher. You talk to your counselor each year. Your parent verifies the schedule. Everybody's in agreement for the most part. And that's the class you take. Uh, in college, you register for the class online yourself. Uh, the oh, registration opens up at a specific time. Uh, and that's when you go in and try to get all your classes and you have to follow, you know, um, the different steps and processes to get those classes. You may uh, wanna to talk to an ac academic advisor about it, but you have to make your own appointment and students have to go themselves. You know, parents cannot make appointments for you or go for you to your uh, appointment. You have to do that. Uh, your classes typically meet before we went to blocks, they were 48 minutes every day. Now they're about 70 minutes every other day. So it's actually one of the things that might be a little bit closer to uh, the college schedule is that every other day type class, but you still could have classes that meet one, two, or three times a, a, a week. Um, and I know I had a lot of classes that were once a week for three hours one night and from six to 9 p.m. And that's definitely a different time frame than you might be used to. In high school, your size of classes are around 30 students or less, where in college, it could range from 10 to over 100 or over 200. Uh, so uh, very different possibility depending on the class you take. Here you, uh, at high school, you, you're maybe given a textbook or at least given the materials that you need, the handouts and various things, you're given the iPad to use. Uh, but in college, uh, you have to budget for books, you have to bring your own computer in most cases. Some colleges have that included, but in most cases, you need your own uh, tablet or computer. And then um, in high school, your graduation requirements are the same for everyone you know, four years of English, three years of math, whatever the case may be. And there's time for electives, so maybe you didn't have too many choices. But in college, your graduation requirements can differ a lot according to what you're studying. And when you do have those elective options, there could be hundreds of cho choices, hundreds of topics to choose from. Uh, even within certain requirements, there could be different topics. So if you need two credits of history, I mean, you could choose from hundreds of different topics uh, in, in that subject area, which can, can feel very overwhelming. How do I pick? Um, and, and not only that, but you get to pick the professor sometimes, and there could be multiple professors teaching the same exact class. And so uh, it can be very overwhelming to pick all your classes. Teachers are another different uh, story when you go to college. In high school, all of your teachers have a, a minimum, a bachelor's degree in education. Uh, they have a license from the state to teach. They've taken courses on how to best teach, uh, teach you in class. Um, and a lot of them have advanced degrees also in education. So advanced curriculum or instruction type uh, education. In college, your professors, most of them are not gonna have any formal education training. They're gonna have their expertise or their degrees in that area that they're teaching. So if they're teaching, if you're taking a marketing class, art history, psychology, they're an expert in that content, but they may have never taken a class on how to teach. And that can be kind of frustrating for students if, if this person who is very smart and really knows this content forward and backward is trying to explain that to you and they're, they don't know how to best get you to learn, um, that can be really you know, tough. Um, your high school teachers will remind you of assignments and deadlines daily. They might put it on the board or post it on Schoology. 
Uh, and your college teachers, you know, they may just give you the syllabus the first day and say, hey, here's all the assignments, here's when they're due. Um, don't forget, maybe we'll remind you at the end of class next time or the class before. Um, but this, you know, 20 page paper is due in 10 weeks, make sure it's done um, and turn it in on time. That's the only reminder you get. Um, teachers will give you assignments and often time to make up missed work if you're absent, um, but don't expect uh, all professors to do that at the college level. You'll have to get the notes yourself, maybe from a classmate. And again, if, if you were given a syllabus and you know that the assignment or project or whatever was due a certain day, um, you need to plan accordingly um, and, and make sure it's still done. Teachers, this is very different teachers uh, and for parents too, especially not just students, teachers in high school um, will we'll talk to you. They'll call your parents, they'll email your parents. We have parent-teacher conferences. There's report cards and progress reports. Um, all along the way, they're you know, updating um, your grades in infant and campus that your parents can see. Uh, parents are constantly, um, and you are constantly know how you're doing in the class and are in communication. In college, you know, they may say, hey, if you need help, come find me during my office hours. You know, they're not going to take calls from parents. There's not parent-teacher conferences. There's none of that. So you, as a student, really have to be proactive um, in reaching out when you need help. And, and lastly, teachers, again, take attendance and they track it. And if you're missing class or late, you know, there's consequences or, or your phone call goes home. In college, they may not take attendance at all. The professors, they may not even know your name in order to take attendance, especially those big lecture halls. They just assume that, hey, you're paying for it. This is your grade. You need to be there and no one's gonna be following up with you if, if you don't attend class. Studying is another big one. In high school, usually you study about the same amount of time that you're in class. So if you're in class for um, 45 minutes a day or 70 minutes a day, you know that might be how much time you have to study outside of class, but in college you should study at least two hours outside of class for each hour you're in class. So if you're in class three hours you know, a week, you might be studying six hours a week outside of class. Um, in high school, teachers may give you time during class to work on homework or group projects, but in college a lot of the times that work is all done outside of class. The teacher, the professor may give you 10 minutes to pick your group and kind of talk about what you're going to do and then you have to meet on your own time to actually do the work. And uh, in high school, you're, you're given most of the info for the tests in class during lecture or assignments, study guides, outlines. And in college, you know, you'd be, be just required to read the resources on your own. You know, this is, these things are gonna be on the test to read these. Um, and it could be quite a shock uh, when all of a sudden this test um, comes and you're like, we didn't talk about this in class. Well it was on the syllabus that you were supposed to read it and, and learn it yourself. And that often leads to grades. So in high school, you may have frequent assignments, quizzes, chapter tests that cover small amounts of info. In college, you might have one or two tests only to cover the whole content of the course, maybe three or four if you're lucky, but that's it. Um, you may not be able to redo a test like in high school, maybe you can make up a test or redo a paper to fix it. College, that may not be an option. It may be you turn it in and, and that's it. And you were supposed to get any feedback or, or help before it, it was due. A high school may offer you extra credit to help raise your grade or at college, there may not be such a thing. In high school, you just need a D to pass the class um, to meet your graduation requirements. Where in college, a lot of classes are gonna have minimums um, in order to count towards graduation in order to uh, declare your major. Um, you may need a certain GPA, either overall or in specific courses related to your major in order to declare their major. So when I was an academic advisor at DePaul, there was core classes that students in the College of Business needed to declare their major. And even if the minimum was a C minus, but a C minus at DePaul was a 1.7 GPA and you needed at least a 2.0, I believe, to, make, to declare. So straight minimums or or lower than the GPA is you, you can't even major in what you wanted to major in. So uh, passing the class is different than actually counting towards your degree. And lastly, as I mentioned, parents can track your progress and receive grades um, through report cards or checking infant in campus, um, but that does not happen in college. They do not have access to your grades. They can't contact professors with questions or concerns. 
Um, there are FERPA laws involved, and so that is private information, you know, and, and it's up to the student to, to keep up on their, their grades. And lastly, personal freedoms, okay? So in high school, as you know, there's a set schedule every day. Bells tell you when the class is up and it's time to go. College, every day could be different. There's no bells. You have to make sure you're on time. You can leave only when the professor says you can go, so on and so forth. In high school, if you skip class or you're late, there's consequences such as maybe detention. College, you're responsible for your actions and any consequences related. So if you don't go to class or you miss content because you're late, you're missing that, that information and it could hurt you when it comes to the tests and, and exams. In high school, many of you have parents who plan your meals. They, they have breakfast ready. They have dinner ready. They do your laundry. Um, they set up your doctor's appointments, haircut appointments, and they take you to these different places. But in college, especially again, if you live on campus, you decide when you eat, what you eat, when you go to sleep, when you wake up, you got to figure out how to do your laundry and all these other things that maybe uh, somebody else did for you. In high school, um, is like Hersey, we have to, we have to enroll you um, and teach you and support you and, and, and do what we can to help you graduate as long as you're meeting very minimum basic requirements like attendance and some, you know, and, and aren't, you know, your behavior isn't dangerous to anybody. In college though, they are not obligated to teach you. And if you get bad grades or, or what, whatnot, they can dismiss you from the school. So you can get on academic probation. And if you don't uh, improve your grades, they can dismiss you uh, with a poor GPA. And lastly, uh, parent permission in high school is needed for everything, for sports, for field trips, for picking classes, uh, any kind of, you know, e exception to any kind of normal, you know, day, uh, you, need, you need to have a parent sign off on it. But in college, because of FERPA laws, as we mentioned, parents are not involved in, in these decisions. If you want to take a class trip somewhere, if you want to go um, a school sponsored trip somewhere, if you want to join a fraternity or sorority, if you want to, you know, do any of these different things, parent, you know, you're an adult, you're 18. Um, and so there's no parent permission, you have to make those decisions yourself. So like we said, it's different, right? So, so, and well, these kind of life changes can lead to really stressed students. So on a survey that was done with college students, you see the link where I got it from at the bottom. Here's some college stress by the numbers. 20% of college students say they feel stress most of the time. 10% of college students had thoughts of suicide. 34% of college students report feeling depressed at least one point, at least one point within the last 90 days. 13% of college students have been diagnosed with depression, anxiety, or other mental health conditions. Uh, and 80% of college students say they sometimes or often feel stressed. 80% of college students say they sometimes or often feel stressed. And about half of surveyed of the surveyed college students felt overwhelmed with anxiety at least once in the last year. So why? Why so much stress? Why uh, so many concerning numbers? Well, as we've mentioned, this is a big life change. It's a big thing to adapt to. Again, going from all those um, areas that we talked about, whether it was grades or school or whatever, family life that you're used to for the last 18 years, now it can look very different in terms of school, in terms of family, in terms of where you live, in terms of the people that you're around. Um, and there's a fear of the unknown. Like, did I pick the right school? Uh, am I going to get along with my roommate? Uh, am I going to make friends here? Am I going to like uh, what I'm studying? And uh, we're going to talk to somebody about how that plays a role in being undecided or undeclared or changing your mind about your major. Living away from home, those of you who, who are going to move away from home, it can be very stressful. Um, again, not having a parent right there to, to help you through each thing. And Parents too, it can be stressful to not know where your kid is all the time or maybe not hear from them for a couple of days. The academic de demands and test anxiety can also go up. You know, you're in harder classes now, as we talked about, the grading is different, the tests can be different. 
uh, there's more pressure on those tests. You might be admitted to the college without a standardized test score, but now you're going to a college where your whole grade in this class is dependent on two, three major tests. Um, it could be very stressful. You could be thinking about finances, right? How am I going to afford uh, to go to this school to keep going here? Or maybe you, you afford the tuition and the room and board, uh, but now some of your friends want to go out and they want to go out to eat and go to all these places that cost extra money. And you're worried that you're not going to be able to keep up with everyone on campus. And then, of course, in the end, what are your postgraduate plans? Just like you come into high school and we say, hey, have you started thinking about what you're going to do after Hersey? You know, some of that's going to happen in college, too. You know, welcome to college. What's your plan for after college? And that, again, along with um, not knowing your major possibly or some of those things can definitely lead uh, to a lot of the uh, mental health challenges that we just looked at. <clears throat> so what can you do? How can you help yourself and parents? How can you help your students make this transition to college go more smoothly? So the first thing is take control of your own education. If you haven't started doing so now in high school these last few, uh, the end of your senior year, do so. Get to know your professors, get involved and meet other students and staff. Find out where the writing center is, where tutoring is, where office hours are. Take control of it and, and don't be afraid to reach out. So leading to number two, be assertive. Create your own support systems and seek out help when you realize you may need it. So you can start with your RA if you live on uh, campus, the admission officer, counselor that might have helped you through if you don't know who to turn to and they can direct you to the appropriate resources. There are a lot of resources on college campuses that you're paying for, right? Um, tutoring, the library, health services, whether it's like a health clinic, whether it's uh, a gym to work out, um, all those things you are paying for, they're part of what you get as a student. So take advantage of them. Take control of your time, uh, plan ahead to satisfy academic obligations, and then make room for everything else. So some of you will go on campus and you might just do classes and maybe a club or uh, an activity here or there. Maybe you'll have a job here or there. Others of you will be very busy. Um, and we're going to hear from one of our alums who's quite involved on campus and how she keeps track of all of her stuff um, and uses um, some tools for time management. Uh, make thoughtful decisions. So don't take a course just to satisfy a requirement and don't drop it too quickly either. You know, sometimes in high school, it was kind of flexible. Oh, I can just change my class here or there, or maybe I'm gonna drop this at this point, or can I do this instead? You know, in college, um, you know, you have all these options, which again, can be stressful, but take those options and explore some things. Um, give it a time, challenge yourself. Um, go outside your comfort zone, because um, that might open up some other possibilities that you never thought of before. It's a great time to learn about yourself as well as the world around you. And think beyond the moment. You know, set goals for the semester, the year, your whole college career. You know, set these goals and remind yourself about them. And if something is derailing you on the way to the first goal, Again, reach out for help from somebody, figure out where you went wrong, and then readjust along the way. And if you have all these things in mind, uh, you'll be more confident, you'll hopefully be less stressed, and you'll be you know, more successful going forward. <clears throat> so I just wanted to share with students and with uh, parents some tips of ways that you can get help. Um, if you are experiencing a certain stressor, as students, especially on campus, you know, what are some things you could do? So if you have academic issues, for example, talk to your academic advisor. Um, every college is gonna have some sort of academic advising, whether it's an official academic advisor overall, or somebody from the department that you're majoring in, you know, somebody can help guide you to the right courses, the right supports, the right tutoring, et cetera. Substance abuse, hopefully that's not an issue that anyone has, but again, with more personal freedom, you know, sometimes comes uh, choices that people are going to make. And um, definitely if, if you find yourself um, going down a road that you shouldn't be, you know, reach out to the student health center or counseling um, or medical facility if they have one for free and anonymous therapy. 
um, and, and take advantage of those supports. Um, the freshman 15 is something that you may have heard of. Uh, it's the saying that students gain, gain 15 pounds their freshman year of college because, again, you have these cafeteria full of choices that you can just eat and maybe you don't have a PE class, so you're not on a sport anymore. Um, maybe you're not eating well, uh, maybe you're stressed and you're not eating enough. There's a lot of different uh, concerns with eating, um, which can lead to a, both physical and mental uh, issues. So go again, health services, go to the fitness center, find nutritionists, colleges have all these resources to help there. Time management can be big. Again, your schedule is gonna look a lot different. So reach out to academic services, student services, they can help you. A lot of schools offer workshops out of the career center on this kind of topic. So definitely look into that. Um, if you have different sexual uh, issues, uh, again, it's more decision-making, um, reach out to the appropriate offices there. Of course, depression and anxiety, you definitely wanna reach out to the counseling center and we'll hear from someone from a counseling center uh, about what kinds of uh, students they see, how they help the students, what kind of coping skills they can offer in, in support uh, of students who are dealing with depression or anxiety. Health, we mentioned again, use the health services on campus. Finances, um, the financial aid office is a great place to go to. All, again, a lot of um, colleges will offer uh, budgeting classes or things like that. And parents, you know, definitely talk to your students about finances, about if it, they're getting their first credit card, how a credit card works, uh, what credit means so that you don't just have an infinite amount of money on there. Um, start practicing with credit. Um, or debit cards if, if that's something that um, you don't have yet. If you're having issues with your housing, whether it's your roommate or anything like that, of course, talk to your RA first. Um, if you're just feeling very stressed, a lot of schools will have um, either massage or physical therapy that they can help. Um, they'll offer, especially around finals time, a lot of stress relief um, type activities that, that college campuses will promote, whether it's handing out stress balls or just a variety of things, free massages, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, colleges, especially around exam time, final, midterms and finals will we'll offer that. And then if you're homesick or have other family issues, again, the counseling office is the place to turn to. So um, you do get a certain number of, of counseling sessions available to you at most campuses. So definitely, again, take advantage and see what they have. They have individual sessions, they often have group sessions. You'll find that whether you go to a college of 1,000 students or 50,000 students, you are not the only one experiencing any of these types of stressors. There's going to be other people and there's going to be supports to deal with that. So again, um, make sure you take advantage of, of some of the resources that the school has to offer. Okay, so to quickly recap. The transition from high school to college can be a shock for a lot of students and even families. Knowing what to expect can help alleviate some of that stress. We talked about some things to expect. Making sure that you are choosing a college that you feel has the right supports in place to help you. So we looked at a few resources, some supports to consider. If it's not too late, check with the school that you might plan to go to and see what kind of supports that they have. Again, seek out help while you're there. Colleges have a lot of resources. You have to seek them out though. The counselor's not gonna go looking for you um, like they might here. Uh, the professors are not gonna always go looking for you if you're not in class. You have to seek out the help that you need. And lastly, find ways to manage your stress in a healthy way. Get enough sleep, eat healthy, exercise, and practice good time management. So that ends the informational part of the presentation. And now I'm really excited for the second part, which is interviews that I have with four really great people who are gonna share some really great insight into the college experience. First, I talked to Savannah Gazda, who is a Hersey grad from the class of 2020 and current student at Case Western Reserve University in Ohio. Stephanie Halaska, the director of the Office of Academic Advising Support at DePaul University. Agnes Knott, who is our college and career assistant here at Hersey, but also a parent of both high school and college students. And Meg Hammes, who is the Director of Counseling Services at Luther College in Iowa. I hope you'll watch all four of these great interviews. Uh, but they are 
titled off and um, sectioned off in the description below. So if you want to skip from one to the other or come back later, I highly suggest, though, at some point you watch all of them because all together they provide a great snapshot of the college student experience with great tips for both students and parents on how to navigate this uh, exciting, but as we've mentioned, uh, possibly stressful time in everyone's life. And um, they offer all offer some great tips. So please uh, stay tuned and watch all four of these great interviews. All right, Savannah, thank you so much for joining uh, today and for sharing your thoughts with us. Savannah is a Hersey grad from the class of 2020. So can you tell us a little bit uh, more about yourself? Uh, where are you at for school? If you have a major set yet, yeah, what else um, you might be doing on campus? Uh, sure. Um, I am currently a freshman at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. And I am majoring in political science and international studies on like the pre-law um, track. And then things that I'm involved in on campus, um, I'm a member of the softball team here. I am on the mock trial team. I'm in a sorority. And then we do have like a pre-professional um, co-ed fraternity. So I am in the pre-law co-ed fraternity. Uh, yeah, here on campus. Great. So you obviously sounds like you are really involved and um, and are probably pretty busy. Um, thinking back a little bit uh, to senior year of high school, I know um, it, with COVID, it was not maybe what you expected. And our current senior, same thing, is not exactly how uh, maybe you expected it. But um, nonetheless, the college decision making process still, you know, went ahead full speed. So. How did you go about making that final college decision? Uh, what were some of the maybe factors that were really important to you that, that led you to that final decision? And um, have, have they been met so far? Or um, you know, would you rethink anything you did along the way? Um, yeah, so kind of the big uh, decision for me with where I ended up going to school was um, academics in schools that had the programs that I wanted. Um, I wanted to major in something along like the international studies, international affairs, and political science. So finding a school that had that program with like a good strength was something that was very important to me. And then I also um, was looking to play softball in college. So that was also a deciding factor for me. And so kind of picking the schools that offered um, me that opportunity to play softball and then met the same academic uh, requirements and like programs that were that I was looking into was how I had uh, made my final decision. And then um, throughout this past year, I'm very happy with my decision. Um, softball is super fun and the program that I'm in um, major wise and just pre-law wise is definitely what I was looking for and I'm really enjoying it. Well that's great to hear of course so it sounds like you really you know did your homework and really thought through all the different things that were important to you. Uh, so you made your decision you're going to go to Case Western. Um, so then just what was the transition kind of like then from high school to college? Um, some things that you were glad you did maybe even the summer before or leading up to to going to campus anything you wish you had done differently to prepare yourself for this this big life changing event um, that you're you're currently experiencing yeah i think over the summer one of the main things that i was glad i did was i went to the like pre-orientation activities that we had i know it's different for every school but um like orientation for us was one week before classes started, but a few days leading up to that, they did have um, some kind of like preliminary meetings that I did attend and ended up being very helpful. Um, since like for me, I was moving out of state and I had never moved out of state before. It was nice to also like meet people, even though obviously all like our classes were virtual, it's still nice to get to meet other people who are kind of like sharing that same experience. Um, I would say one thing that I wish I would have done a little differently was um, kind of getting organized kind of right away. I know for me, we like for my school, we picked our classes over the summer. So I did have, we did have access to like what our class schedule would look like. 
and um, kind of like organization wise, like calendars and planners, kind of like figuring out the system that I was going to use beforehand would have been beneficial because instead I kind of waited um, until I got a couple weeks into it to kind of really like solidify like how I was going to kind of manage everything with like sports, clubs and classes. Um, would you like me to kind of explain, I guess, like how, like what I did to like, yeah, that? that'd be great if you have some tips. Cause yeah. yeah, like you said, you're, you're probably very busy and, uh, you know, you don't have a bell schedule every day and, you know, yeah. so, so it can be very, uh, you know, you have to be very responsible. So yeah, if you have tips, please share. Yeah. What, what I found worked for me was I put all my, um, I'd actually never used a Google calendar until college and one of my teammates like the upperclassmen was like oh coach uses a google calendar use that like we had like our practice and like game schedule on there so what i decided doing was every like meeting that i had so like whether it was like my classes or like club meetings and stuff i would put like all my times like in a google calendar but i had a paper planner that i would put my individual assignments in because if you put it on the google calendar also it is a little bit overwhelming so i would put like due dates and stuff in my planner that like I would have on paper, but then I would go to like my Google calendar for my like, I guess, like hourly schedule type thing. And I found that that worked best for me because then the calendar itself wasn't as like cluttered because it didn't have like due dates and stuff like that. So for me, that was kind of the system. I kind of, I stuck with it. I'm still using it now. And I find it's like, for me, the best way to like keep everything organized. For sure. I use my Google calendar for everything as well. So I, um, definitely, definitely can second that as a good option. So yeah, whatever works best for you, um, for sure. So, um, you know, sounds like some of that was, was maybe one thing that was, you know, pretty different. So can you think of maybe what was the biggest shock to you, um, that you weren't ready about college that you maybe weren't quite ready for, and then maybe something that was easier than you thought. Um, and then, you know, any stress that you or your peers, you know, um, anything that stresses you or your peers out more than maybe you were expecting? Like you thought, oh, this won't be a big deal and maybe it's stressful or vice versa. Yeah. Um, I think for me, the biggest shock, and like I had known this going in, but definitely experiencing it was different, was how different like your day-to-day -day is from being in high school. Because I was like, obviously, like, you know, you have classes, you have practice, but like at Hersey, you know, you would like go to your like eight hours of classes and then you would have practice right after school or before school. And then you kind of like went home and did stuff. But I found that, like, for me, I never, um, during my two semesters here, have never had more than three classes a day. So, and they were kind of spread out. So for me, it was, the shock was kind of how much, I don't want to call it free time, but there is a lot of time, there's more time during your day that you have, like, open than during high school. So for me, when, like, the shocks was really, like, trying to finding a way to like utilize the time in between classes. You know, when you go to class, you're like tired after you don't want to necessarily do your homework in between classes because you, know, you want a break from sitting in lectures and stuff, but really finding a way to like utilize that time in between classes because, you know, when you, if you do extracurriculars too, like your um, nights usually are more booked because that's when most students don't have class or, and like from my experience, like most of us are done with class by like five o'clock. So there's a lot of like more extracurriculars at night. So that time that you would that you would normally probably use like in high school to kind of do your homework before you go to bed is now kind of um, used up. So you really have to like learn how to um, work kind of like throughout the day. For me in high school, I was very much, I would do my homework kind of like in a big chunk of time at night and just kind of sit there for a few hours and just like get it all done and then go to bed versus now I don't really have that option. So it is kind of like working for, you know, an hour and a half here in the morning and then going to class and then having like 45 minutes to do like another assignment and then go to class and then like practice. And then like, just kind of like splitting it up more in chunks of time, I think was kind of like a bigger shock to me. Cause that's not, I guess like traditionally how I did my work in high school. So it is a bit different, but again, like once you get the hang of it and like kind of get into that routine, it's not as shocking, but definitely the first like few weeks was kind of different, like getting into a new routine. I would say one thing that was easier than I thought, I was very, not nervous, but one of the things I was kind of nervous about was, um, I guess like professors and like that kind of communication. Cause I feel like 
I don't know, I feel like going into college, it's like, oh, your professors are like, people are like, oh, your professors are scary. And like, I feel like you hear stories about people who are like, oh my God, I had like bad experiences and things like that. But I found that if you actually just like, e like if you have a question, like email them or go to office hours, they're very responsive. Obviously that's like an individual, like there's no guarantees with like professors at like different schools, like everyone. But in my experience, I've never like, ask a professor if I could go to like to set up an office hours and they've never they've never told me no or like if I have a question on something like oh do you want to just meet like obviously over zoom because like we're we have online classes like we can set up this time or like if I let's say I have practice during one of their office hours but like I really want to go like being like hey like I have practice like is it okay like do you have another available time they will make time because at the end like they are there to help you I don't think from my experience it's don't be afraid to like reach out to them for help because at the end of the day that's what they're there for and like they want students who are engaged in their classes and obviously I don't know what next year is really going to look like but um if there are online classes it is kind of hard to have that like I guess you can't really like stay after class and like ask your professor for questions so if you just like send them an email or like like with a question after class or you can send them like a message in zoom like hey can I ask you a quick question after like they are responsive to that and they do want to know that people are there like participating in class and like paying attention and like really want to help you so I would say kind of like not being nervous to reach out to your professors because it will help you and they want you to understand the material um I would say stress wise I definitely is an adjustment I would say again this is depending on your school but we do have like midterms and at Hersey I mean I had a few midterms like here and there but they weren't as um, frequent I would say so that was kind of different for me and then um, again this is depending on your program but a lot of my classes um, they don't necessarily have assignments so it's kind of like I had a class last semester that was four exams and like that was it or like I have a class now that's three exams and like that's it and like not to like scare anyone like it does kind of sound intimidating but I think not 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 falling behind but um it, it's easy when you don't have as many assignments to be like oh I, I don't have to like do this today like it's never going to be graded it's not due and then you kind of get behind so I would say kind of just staying trying to stay on top of it and again like here and there if you like um, or like, oh, I'm super busy tonight. I'll just take care of it tomorrow. Like that, that's like the nice part about not having, for, like in my experience, that's the nice part about not having like constant um, deadlines is you do kind of have that flexibility to like, it is kind of like up to you with your schedule again, like you're kind of on your own, which is nice to kind of have that more um, say kind of in like how you want to study and like how you want to prepare. But then it also kind of is that you have to stay accountable and you really have to make sure that like you are staying on top of your stuff. So again, that's kind of like what I was talking about earlier with like planners and organization. That is, I would say the biggest, my biggest takeaway from this year is really like, like it's on you more than, um, than like um, in high school, I'd say, because like, they're not gonna be like hounding you if you don't turn something in, they're not gonna be like, oh, like, where is it? Like, it's up to you to turn it in. And yeah, so I would say just like staying accountable and organized is my biggest um, like piece of advice, but it definitely is doable. It's not impossible. And I think once you, I mean, the first couple of weeks, like getting adjusted, like, yeah, it's gonna be completely different and it might be a little rough, but once you get that like sense of like, oh, this is how I'm gonna do it. And you stay like accountable with it, like it'll all be fine and it'll work out. Definitely. That's outstanding advice. Um, very, you know, again, real, real uh, life, how, how it is. A lot of those great skills, you know, hopefully students are starting to build now um, with, especially with, you know, being a lot remote. Some people are remote, some are not, but finding ways to be assertive, to, to get help, uh, getting help in college, um, you know, just like high school. Um, is is um, especially important, and like you said, you you're in the driver's seat even more so. You know, mom or dad's probably not going to call for you and, and ask the professor if what what your grade is. Like you have to do that, 
And uh, that's good skills, again, to prepare you for then the next step in your life, internships, jobs, you know, all that kind of stuff. So thanks so much for all that really um, great insight and advice. And just to wrap up, any final advice you would give, especially to seniors as they finish their senior year and uh, they're, they're either trying to make that final decision um, or they have, and now they're, you know, really nervous about um, taking that next step in their life. Anything that you think you would want to share? Yeah, I would say when it comes to making your decision, I think it's super important to definitely make the decision that is right for you. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be the one going to school. So obviously, it's important to like weigh opinions, obviously, like parents, family members, and like advisors, totally. But I do think at the end of the day, you kind of need to, you know, sit down and really think about like what you want out of a school and what is important in your decision making and stay true to that because you are like, obviously, like you're committing to go to another school. So I think really making sure that you pick a school that's right for you, but also knowing that, you know, this is like, it, like you do have that opportunity to try it out and like it's not necessarily like set in stone but really trying to make um the best decision for you personally not like the decision that I guess like everyone else necessarily thinks is like right for you because it is your education and it's going to be your next four years but also like with that not to like stress about it because you like you've been looking at the resources you've been doing your research and if there's a school you really really like that you think is right for you then like use that to make your decision. Um, I would say other advice, finish the year strong, like your school year strong. I know it's like second semester, senior year, but definitely finish strong and then enjoy your summer. But I would say the couple weeks before you start kind of trying to reel back in and like get organized and get in that school mode, that would probably be very beneficial. And then attend orientation. I do not skip orientation because that is where they will tell you most of the stuff that you need to know for your first couple of weeks. So it's like, go to that because it is very beneficial. Yeah. Fantastic, great advice. I hope the students will uh, take you up on it. Um, one reason why to have uh, an alum because you, you, know, you were just in their shoes lately. Um, and so if, if uh, they don't want to take my advice. Uh, hopefully they will definitely take yours because it was fa fantastic advice. So uh, Savannah, thank you so much for all your insight, for your advice. We wish you the best of luck in your college uh, experience. And we look forward to um, seeing how you uh, progress through and, and all the success, success you're going to have uh, going forward in the future. So thank you again. Thank you for having me. All right, now I'm joined by Stephanie Alaska, who is the Director of the Office of Academic Advising Support at DePaul University, my alma mater times two, so, uh, and former colleagues. So thank you, Stephanie, so much for joining uh, us today. Um, can you please tell us a little bit about what you do in that role and what the Office of Academic Advising Support um, offers students at DePaul? Yeah, so DePaul is, you know, has a lot of different programs um, and options for students, which is really great. Um, and my office kind of uh, sits next to all of those as the office that helps students who are figuring out what they want to study. Uh, so our advisors can talk about um, all of the majors at DePaul and really help students like with the decision making process. So I oversee that office and um, occasionally get to meet with students still, um, but then work with the advisors on, on how we want to help students. Awesome, great. So in uh, in your office, what would you say is maybe the percentage or the amount of students that come in that are undeclared or undecided? Because that's usually a big decision part of the application process. What major are you applying to or, or whatnot? So uh, do you see a lot of students that are undeclared or undecided? Yeah, it's really interesting. So over the last 10 years, the number of students who are formally undeclared, as in like that's the option that, that's listed next to their name in our system, has gone down. But the number of students that we work with has stayed the same. And that's because, um, you know, so many students feel like they have to pick a thing to start, um, even if their mind's not made up. And so we like the term exploratory because that includes our undeclared formal in the system students. And that's about 25%, if you think about, you can be undeclared in all of the different um, colleges within DePaul. 
Um, but it's probably more like 70 to 80% of students that will change their major or explore something in their time. And that aligns pretty closely to um, national averages like of students who make changes to their major across the country. So yeah, definitely a high number, right? Maybe that's surprising for some people, maybe not. Um, you know, whoever you ask might say, you know, the, the amount of time students change their major, um, you know, while they're in college can, can, you know, vary from one to three to five to seven. So um, it's definitely not uncommon. And I think um, that should be noted that you don't have to have your whole life figured out, especially as a 17 or, or 18 year old. And so it's great that there are services at at many colleges that that work with those exploratory that's a great that's a great term to use um so then what are some of the biggest questions or concerns that students come into your office with right so like the main question is in some capacity they want to figure out their major right and that can stand for a lot of different things um but there's a lot of nuance right there's a lot of different reasons underneath that so a lot of those students who are the formally undeclared you know, they're anywhere on a spectrum from I have no idea what I want to do or what I like or anything to I have too many interests, like how do I pick between them all. And then even within that, you know, these other exploratory students, you know, they pick something, maybe they still are, are in one of those two groups. Um, but students will come in too because, you know, they realize they pick something and they don't like it. it you know, it literally wasn't what they thought it was, um, or they aren't doing well, uh, which can sometimes prompt a, a decision making process that they weren't expecting to have. And that can feel a lot like, you know, grieving a plan and, and loss. And so there can be some, you know, emotion with that. Um, sometimes students, you know, the way a lot of college degrees are structured has, you know, sometimes up to half the degree is by definition, things that are not your major. So you're taking a lot of classes across the board. And sometimes you take a class that you had no idea existed, and you find something that really aligns with what you love and um, what you want to learn more about. And so, you know, we're really excited to see these students. You know, we think it's really normal to reflect on decisions that you've made about your path. Um, and we think it's really normal that um, you're changing. Um, I think that's probably one of the goals that a lot of people have is to kind of further develop and establish your identity. Um, and so sometimes you want to examine some of the choices you've made. So we'll help students come up with individual plans, right? There's not one size fits all with this. Um, we want them to get answers to their questions and um, explore their options. And really importantly, be strategic with how they're choosing classes so that they can still keep their graduation deadline in mind, um, but keep their options open and, and, and try out some of the areas that are most interesting to them. I and mean, I think that's one of the benefits to working with our advisors is, you know, they know the whole landscape. And so they can help students be really smart about those decisions along the way. Yeah, definitely, definitely utilize the, the resources that are, that are out there. Um, and so do you, you kind of alluded to this, but do you get the impression a lot of times that students are really like stressed, like seriously stressed about this decision? Is it more like, oh, I just need the logistics of how to do this or both? And, and if it really becomes a very stressful, you know, conversation or situation. Um, do you handle that aspect of stress as well, or do you refer to other areas in the university? Yeah, all of those things. I think there are a small percentage of students that, you know, they've made up their minds or they just want some logistic assistance. And of course, we're happy to do that. Um, but I think for a lot of students, it's the mix of, um, you know, the emotion of, of this, um, and they can be really stressed, you know, some of this, um, you know, we like humans use a lot of energy on very small decisions throughout the day. So big decisions, which major decision can feel like a big decision, can feel like a lot. And, and there's the name for it, we call it decision fatigue. And so they want someone to help them you know, through that. Um, sometimes students can be really stressed because uh, the, you know, this decision was framed a certain way throughout their life. Um, you know, they've heard, you know, maybe you know, throughout high school or on TV, um, this is the biggest decision you're going to make. Um, when when we're, we know it's it's not, you know, it, it's a it's an important decision, but it's one of many that students will make in their time. Um, and sometimes, you know, family, you know, who have seen their student grow and develop, have a really good idea of what they think their students can be best at, and the student is perceiving that as this is the only thing I should be doing, and there's a lot of stress with that too. Um, one of the biggest things we see that brings a lot of stress is uh, misinformation. 
Um, and so our advisors, I think, help alleviate a lot of stress by um, dispelling myths. So things like, um, I guess the students often think that choosing your major for your time in college means choosing the career for the rest of your life. And it doesn't. And, and there may be some students where, you know, your major, you need one specific major to do one specific career and you'll do that, you know, for many years. Um, but that's really the rare exception. Um, and that, you know, we just need to focus on choosing a, a, a good major for right now and, and keep in mind other things that are required for, you know, careers you're interested in. Um, you know, another myth that, you know, only some majors get good jobs. Uh, if that was the case, we would no longer offer any of those other majors, right? Um, and so that's one that a lot of people hear things from friends, um, family, TV, the news, uh, you know, those clickbait articles that you see. Here are the nine majors you should consider everything else is garbage. Um, when really it comes down to, it's a lot more complex than that, right? And there's definitely a spot for everybody. And I think, you know, one of the biggest things there is that there's the assumption that there is one single right answer to that question. Um, and that alone can feel stressful, right? Um, but there isn't one single right choice. You know, just like when you're thinking about which college you wanna go to, you probably identified a few that like, I could be happy in a lot of these places and you probably could be, um, but it's the one where you put your energy that becomes the right choice, right? Like you make it the right choice. You know, and I think there's, um, there's a lot of societal pressure on um, kind of this mantra that we hear over and over, or we see on signs, the, you know, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Um, I mean, that makes it feel like there is one right choice, right? Um, and that if something feels like work, then you've made a bad choice. And that's just not true. Um, that sets up some pretty unreasonable expectations too for what, what work is gonna be. Um, you know, if you think about your family or your friends or your significant other, um, you know, a lot of people in your life who probably bring joy into your life. Um, it's probably also work too, right? Maintaining relationships. Um, and so just because something means that there's work uh, doesn't mean it's bad or the wrong choice, right? Um, it's this idea of passion and you need to discover your passion in this first year um, of college, you know, in the year that you're 18. Um, and that's not true. You know, all the research says that passion is something that you develop over time. It's not something that you discover. So your job as, as a freshman, as a sophomore, is to just worry about what am I interested in and then follow that thread and see where it goes. Is this a thread that I'm, I'm just following for a short time and, and that's just a thing I'm interested in and like to read about? That's great. Um, or is this something that is the more you get into it, you know, the more engaging it is for you and you and, and it leads to more than that, like a major um, or an internship. Um, you know, outside, I guess, of like the bigger existential questions about this, you know, I think ultimately students can feel like they're stressed because they don't know what their options are or they don't know what they're good at. And so again, we can help students, um, you know, set up a plan for getting information that they need or thinking through past experiences or talking through obstacles that seem like they're in the way um, because ultimately it's a personal decision um, and helping like create action steps for making that decision can help alleviate stress. Um, but we're not alone. I mean, we refer students to our career center and that they help students with their resumes and networking and thinking about internships and work experiences and university counseling services when it feels like maybe the stress feels like a lot more um, than just the decision that's being made. So we do a lot of referrals and we can help students and, and any advisors um, at colleges and universities will always help students connect to all the different things that the college has to help support. Definitely, yeah, it's, it's, it's great that you mentioned all those different um, resources and, and, and ways that can help. Because I think sometimes students feel like if they don't have everything figured out from now, it's like they're doomed and um, it, it's, it's, it's more common than I think students and parents, you know, think too. I think parents also get worried that, oh, their kid has to, you know, have everything figured out and go to the right school for this specific major or else, you know, they're, they won't be successful. And um, from personal experiences and from research and all that, we can, we can say that, uh, including the, the, the perfect school, and, and that's a big thing that my students here hear me say that it's not uh, where you go, um, that's who you'll be, it's, you know, what you do there. So, um, so thank you for, 
for sharing a lot of those insights of, of things that you see, you know, as well, too. So uh, last but not least, you've kind of alluded to some things, but any advice uh, for uh, high school students? Uh, if there, Can they do any of these things now to figure out what to major in? Um, anything they can do, you know, before they get to college um, and, and make these decisions, whether they are seniors at this point, you know, the high school is almost over, so they can't really take any new classes or anything else. But in the meantime, over the summer, and even, you know, uh, younger students who maybe will, will watch this, um, or younger siblings who might be um, interested to know. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I have a few like bits of advice, the things to think about, um, that, that things that you can act on now. Um, you know, the biggest one is, and I think this is kind of the umbrella over everything, and that's, you know, to give yourself some time and some grace for this decision, because um, you have, you've done a lot in high school, um, and it feels like, well, I've, I've done all the things I can. Um, college is going to have even more, um, so you've had a really good training for kind of trying out different things, and it's okay to wait until you have a little bit more information. Um, and, and as you said, you know, some colleges might have different timelines for how that happens, so you, one of the things you can do now is to ask, you know, the colleges you're thinking about um, how they support students in that and, and make sure that lines up with what, what you're going to need. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing, maybe the most action oriented thing is to gather information. Um, think of this, this is, this is your research time, right? Um, and we make the best decisions when we have the most information, right? And we've, we've seen a lot of, of what's out there. So there's two, I think, main ways to think about this. Get some information about what the options are. And so if you've already decided on a school, that can mean, you know, just looking at their list of programs or majors. Um, but ask yourself questions like, do I know what this word means, right? Do I know what marketing actually means? What's the difference between marketing and advertising? Um, was it to Paul, there's a really big difference. Um, and so you wanna look into that, ask yourself, should I look up what this means? What, what this actually entails in terms of classes I'll take? Um, and, and figure out like, you know, you've heard finance is a good major. You think that sounds, you know, like a good thing. I, I've, I've been interested in, in kind of keeping track of the stock market, but if you hate everything to do with math and that's never been something you've enjoyed, what else can you think about um, that, that aligns with that? And then with that, um, you know, gather information about yourself. Uh, you know, think back on, on what you accomplished in high school. When were you at your best? When were you most engaged? When were you least engaged? And why was that? Was it you didn't like math because you always had it at 8 a.m. every day? Um, or is it the content, right, that which wasn't engaging to you? Um, what, are, what are different jobs you've had or trips you've taken? And did you learn anything about yourself? What kinds of articles do you click on to read more about? What are you drawn to learn, you know, the most about? Um, and be honest with yourself and, and keep that, you know, how has that, you know, do what you love mantra affected you? You know, you know, you love puppies, you love dogs, you have dogs, you're a dog walker, you follow every dog account on TikTok, but does that mean that has to be the thing that you do for your life? No, it doesn't. So be honest with yourself. Is this just a really like important interest in my life? Or is this, is this something that I want us to study and, and perhaps do beyond college? Um, you know, think about the work experience. Do you have a job this summer? Is it one you've done for the last few years? Could you find a different one? Um, you know, really push yourself to try out some new things because that's how we're going to learn more things about ourselves. Within that, you know, talk with your family. Um, you know, how do they, you know, see you being successful? What have they noticed over these years? And, and the, you know, you should all talk about what the expectations are for how you're making this decision in college now, you know, what questions everybody has about the process. Um, you know, and sometimes parents, uh, you know, we had one experience, you know, 20 some years ago, maybe more, um, and things have changed. So, that, you know, everybody together can decide what questions should we ask about um, and see if that's still what I remember, um, you know, or if, or if there's a new way of doing things. And I caution students to be careful with um, shortcuts. Uh, I know there's like appealing tests to take. It's going to answer these, you know, 29 questions and I'll tell you what to major in, but, you know, be skeptical of that because it is a, it's a complex decision that takes into account, you know, a lot of yourself and can that really be can, achieved in, you know, 20 minutes. Um, so certainly you can pull meaning from it. Um, but yeah, just be careful with that. 
um, you know, often the, the solution to having a lot of interests isn't to have many majors. So be honest with yourself too, again, about how different things that you're interested in, what role it might play in your life. Um, two more pieces of advice for students. One, you're gonna get asked a lot, uh, what are you majoring in and what can you do with that? Um, and I think there are good ways to answer that question to because people that, that, that care about you and wanna know about your life, right? Um, that can deflect some of the pressure. It feels like it can add to stress if you are feeling stressed about this decision. And you can say, you know, I'm considering a lot of interesting things, including, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, I'm not sure yet which is the best path, but I can't wait to try them out, right? Because they probably want to share what they studied or what they're interested in. Um, and if they say, well, what are you going to do with that? Um, you know, you can say, you know, the classes in this major teach a lot of skills and things like data analysis and critical thinking. Those are skills that employers are really looking for. So, you know, I hope to have my pick of jobs. Um, many students are going to have jobs and careers that don't exist right now um, in their lifetime. So it's really smart to start thinking now about how am I developing skills that I can use everywhere, right? Not just in one job or for, you know, learning job training. Um, you know, and, and, and ask people too, what did you major in? What did you study? And, and, and what experiences did you have after college, right? So start learning about different people's paths. And you're going to find out that, you know, they're not typically linear, right? They kind of go in a lot of interesting directions. So you can start finding out about how people have pieced all that together. And the final thing, I guess, at the end of the day, you know, think about this bigger idea of purpose. And we, DePaul, we define this as, you know, what does the world need and what abilities, skills, gifts, and knowledge do I have that can contribute to that? So, you know, think about that. What are problems out there that I want to help solve, big and small? Um, and what, you know, the best thing you can do for the world is to get great at the things that you're good at now and are interested in, and then use that um, to help. And I think ultimately that's, that's the goal for everybody. Um, and you can absolutely start thinking about that now and, and paying attention to, to what those problems are and what you're good at. Absolutely. Thank you for all that um, amazing insight and advice. Um, and I hope that the students and parents watching, you know, understand that, of course, life is this journey that you're constantly learning about yourself, you're learning about the world around uh, you, and that uh, there is support out there, um, both here at the high school, of course, and then even when you go to college, um, there are numerous departments, numerous uh, resources uh, that you're paying for too, by the way, um, that you should definitely take advantage of uh, because uh, again, you, you grow, you change as a person. And um, so your plans can change and that's okay. So again, Stephanie, thank you so much for sharing your uh, uh, advice with us and insight on um, students who aren't sure about what they want to do uh, academically um, and for all, all the tips for um, our seniors and parents and even um, up, up and rising uh, students in high school. So thank you so much again. You're welcome. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us, Mrs. Knott, our college and career assistant. Do you want to introduce yourself a little bit more and, and tell us about yourself? Sure. So thanks for having me today. Um, I'm Agnes Snott. I've been here at Hersey working um, as the college and career assistant. This is my third year. So helping kind of with all aspects of the college process. Um, I'm also formerly a high school English teacher and um, really like working with high school students. Um, on top of that, I'm a mom. I have four, I would guess I would say adolescents and young adults myself. Um, I have two who have gone through this process. Um, I have a junior in college, a sophomore in college, and two in high school. And so I'm kind of speaking from that perspective um, as a parent today. Great, thank you. Yes, yeah, so again, great resource for our, our students and families here uh, at Hersey as well. So uh, we really wanna hear, uh, um, especially about that parent piece as well, uh, since you have that experience. So. First, as a parent, what were some of the biggest stressors or concerns you saw from your child uh, senior year as they prepared to make that final decision and throughout the summer leading uh, up to going off to college? Was there anything you were able to do to help them through it um, or any advice that you would have for parents um, who haven't been through having a student you know, graduate and go off to college yet? Sure. So I would, I guess I would say to students, like, 
this is a big deal. It's a big major decision that you're making and it's okay to be a little confused and have mixed feelings. Um, I think, you know, you're living the senior year trying to make that decision about college um, and you're thinking about next year, but then you're also trying to like celebrate those last moments of senior year. And so it's hard because you kind of have, I think your, your feet in two different worlds. And so I'd say sort of be patient with yourself. Um, it's okay that one minute you'll feel really excited and maybe the next minute you'll feel kind of anxious and worried about stuff. And that is perfectly normal. Um, I would, you know, just reiterate that to parents too, that as a parent, I felt that same mixture of emotions. I was very um, excited for my students and my own children when they were making this decision, but I was also worried, you know, did I teach them things they needed to know and I'm going to miss them so much. And so I guess the biggest thing I want to share today is that remember that you're going to have that mixture of emotions and it's perfectly normal and okay. And so to be patient with each other, um, seniors, be patient with your parents and, you know, parents be patient with your students. Everybody handles that a little bit differently. Um, you know, some people get kind of clingy, other people, you know, other children maybe, you know, are kind of rude and, you know, want mom and dad kind of backed away. Um, some things or advice that I found as a parent that was helpful to me was just to um, give your senior, give them that gift of your time and your attention. And so, you know, when they're ready to talk or they have feelings that they want to share, sit down and, you know, take that time with them. Celebrate all those end of the year things from high school. Um, also, I thought one really good um, piece of advice is to kind of plan some fun things as you're thinking about the summer. And, you know, I can talk a little bit more about that. But overall, it's an exciting time, but it's also filled with a little anxiety. And that is completely normal. For sure, definitely. Like you said, a major life decision, major milestone in both the student's life and for a parent. Uh, every time, you know, you're your student goes to that next level. Um, it's it's uh, both exciting and nerve wracking, and especially if they're going to go, you know, when they go to college, especially if they're going to move away from you for that first time. So, as a parent, um, did you have any stressors yourself as the parent during this time too? And if so, maybe what were those? And was there anything that helped you from the parent? Like, was there like books or? events that you attended that helped you through the process? Sure. So I think um, speaking, you know, as a parent, one of the things that um, I found myself doing, especially this um, summer, right before my students, uh, my kids went off to college is thinking to myself, you know, did I teach them that? Did I talk to them about, you know, making sure they did this or when they're sick, what to do? And there was all these things that I felt like, oh my gosh, did I teach them everything? Now they're, you know, they're leaving and I need to make sure I've done all that. And I remember a friend saying to me, and I thought it was a great advice. She said to me, you know, I realized with my own son, no, maybe I didn't teach them everything, but they're not going to learn it all from me. That sometimes they have to learn it on their own and going off and having that experience is how they have to learn it. Um, I also felt for myself, some of the stress um, came from my own like kind of heightened emotion about my time with my student is short. You know, we just have this summer and then they're off to school and the family's changing. And so I found myself um, wanting to be with them and have these special moments with them, but also you know, kind of feeling like this um, sense of dread or, you know, sometimes as kids get ready to leave, they sort of push themselves away. And so sometimes they can act out or be kind of not the most pleasant because they're preparing to sort of be away. And it's easier to be away if, you know, you're not super close and getting along. And so I think just recognizing and giving myself space as a parent to say, all right, I'm going to plan a couple, maybe it be a special outing or something like that, or um, a family dinner or vacation, 
but also realize there's also going to be times I think to myself, I'm ready for them to go, you know, <laughs> like coming home late at night and worrying about curfew. And so again, that kind of up and down um, of the summer. A few things that really helped me as a parent, and this for the teens too, um, a lot of colleges will offer like a college, a summer orientation program. And sometimes this could be um, a weekend in the summer that you go to the college and they have programs for the student that would be kind of getting you acclimated to campus. Sometimes you may meet with an advisor or sign up for classes, but they oftentimes have programs for the parent as well. And I know with my oldest, uh, Emma went off to Marquette University and I did attend a orientation program there. And one of the sessions I found really helpful um, was specifically for parents and the head of residence life at Marquette gave some really good suggestions, which I took to heart and I've done with both my students and I, I would recommend these. So a couple things she recommended that I've done is some of those um, kind of important conversations that you want to have with your student before they're heading off to college. And I think I have four or five things that I would say, um, take some time over the summer and not the day before they're leaving to sit down and kind of talk, maybe not all at once, because it would be, you know, several hours, but have some conversations. I think one of the big ones is sort of talking about like your academic expectations and kind of talking to your student about that, what you expect, um, how they're going to do. Um, another big one, I think, is finances and money and trying to manage. Hopefully, you've already had that conversation with your students about, you know, what you're paying and what they're responsible for. But I know for me and my daughter, you know, even though they had part-time jobs and things like that, it's the first time they're really managing their finances, the tuition bills, all that stuff will go directly to the student. And so if your student, you know, doesn't have his or her own, you know, bank account or way to keep track of money, that's a good conversation to have. Um, another one I think is really important, and hopefully you've been kind of having these conversations with your kid all throughout high school, but I think some of what I would term kind of like health and safety decisions and sort of those questions that come up a lot in college you know, conversation, have a conversation about drinking and drug use, um, sex, health. I mean, all of those things are important. And now that your student is off on their own, um, they're going to be faced with different things that maybe they've been faced with in high school, maybe not. But I think making sure you have those conversations with them, oftentimes the student will have to go through a um, most colleges now have them go through kind of a little orientation on the computer about um, drinking and um, things like that. But it, I think it's important as a parent to have those conversations, remind them of your values and your family values and kind of just for their own sake, you know, they're gonna get sick at school. Maybe they're used to you taking care of them when they're sick. So things like that I think are really important. Um, another conversation is talking to your students about, okay, you're going to be gone. How are we going to be communicating when you're at school? Um, I know with the availability of phones and text messages, it's really easy to communicate. But at the same time, um, your student might not want to be texting mom all the time. And it is their chance in college to learn their independence and figure that out. So, um, kind of having that conversation that, yeah, we can text each other, but maybe once in a while, it would be nice to talk on the phone. And so, you know, I know for me, before my students left, I kind of said, I'm going to miss you a lot. I'm not going to bother you and call you all the time, but it would be nice for me to at least once a week have a chance to talk to you. And whether you do that on the phone or FaceTime, um, that was really helpful because then even that first week when they left, I knew, okay, I'm dropping you off on Wednesday. And I said, you know, by Sunday, I kind of want to hear how it's going. And so giving my student the um, independence to say, 
all right, mom, I know I'm going to be really busy, but sometime before Sunday, I'll give you a call and tell you how things are going. Um, I think also just like expressing confidence in your, your child and telling them, you know, you can do this. You've had a lot of successes in the past. You've learned new things. It's okay to be excited and nervous, but you're going to make it. And so, um, those are some of the things I would say I think are important to have conversations about. Yeah, those are uh, great, great uh, examples. You know, not always the easiest to have sometimes some of the topics, um, but I think it will be, um, it, it'll be better for the relationship in, in the long run if everyone's on the same page. So that balance between independence but you're still their kid. You're still, you know, you still care about each other. Um, I know I've heard some stories where a parent might text a kid and they didn't text back within like 10 minutes and they freaked out and called to college. And the kid was like, I was in class. I forgot my phone. So it, it can be definitely nerve wracking. It could be a change, you know, not knowing where your kid, you know, might be. Um, students, you know, you got to think that, you know, your parents have you know, known kind of where you've been, literally physically where you've been uh, for the last 18 years of your life. And now they, they don't. So it's, it's, it's an adjustment. So kind of going off of that, um, the fact, you know, as a parent, now your students don't live in your house. If, if you have younger children like you do, uh, how did that affect them? What was the impact on them? You know, and their older siblings all of a sudden are, are gone. Did they react in a certain way? Um, and just maybe some of the differences in, in like your household and your family, um, and you alluded to some of them, but how, how are things like different and how did you go about adjusting to this change where there, you went from a family of six to five to four, like in the same house? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And I think, um, you know, one of the things that, um, it's important to know both for students and the parents is that everybody in the family has to adjust. And so even though I think there's a lot of focus on the student going off to school and the parent, um, everybody has to kind of find their new place. And someone described it to me almost like if you think of like in a crib, you know, a child has like a mobile. Remember those little things? things you'd put in the baby's crib and the little, well, if you think of like a mobile with all those different parts and you take like one family member out, it's like the whole mobile has to like rebalance and figure out a way, how is it gonna be now with this person gone? And I really like that image because I do think that it takes a little time. Um, for, for us and our family, I know that summer before um, everybody kind of had this feeling of like, oh, a big change is coming, you know, that somebody's leaving, you know, my oldest Emma was leaving for school and we know it's not going to exactly be the same, but what's that going to be like? Um, and so I think each time it's very different depending on the student. Um, my oldest was a very kind of full of life, energetic, very enthusiastic person. Um, and, you know, when she left, the house was a little quieter, both for good and bad. You know, my son is just a little more easygoing and, and kind of quiet. Um, and so there was a different feel to the house. Um, I do remember as a parent, so I guess I'm speaking to parents right now, um, even though my children were like ready to go and they were excited and I felt like they were well prepared, um, I was not prepared for how sad I was going to be. And I remember just even the first night, like setting our table and, you know, you're, I'm used to putting six placemats down and setting the table. And when I came back and I set five placemats down, like I just like started bawling and my younger kids are like, are you going to cry every night since Emma left? <laughs> and it's, it's like, no, but those first couple days when she was gone, um, even though I knew she was in a great place, she would be fine. It, it was sort of emotional. So I guess I would just say, prepare yourself. You know, you may have those feelings. Everybody in the family will handle that differently. I think um, for my younger, my younger kids, um, figuring that out. Um, on the one hand, my daughter was really glad because she got her own room finally, my third. But then um, missing her older sister, and then the next year my son went away, 
and they had, you know, driven to school together all the time. And so um, it is a change for everybody. I would say you figure it out and there's kind of like a new normal. Um, and then, you know, they come home for Thanksgiving or Christmas and there's a little bit of trying to figure it out again. But I think just in general, like I said at the beginning, be patient with each other, you know, parents be patient with your teens as much as you can and seniors and those new to college, you know, be patient with your parents. They love you and they miss you. Um, and, you know, I think that's part of the big thing. For sure. Yes. Um, definitely adjustments and and if nothing else we've all had lots of adjustments over the last you know year plus now so hopefully we're we've got those good skills and adjusting to to uh new situations um for your students and who who went who are in college now um did they share with you some of their biggest uh, challenges transitioning um you know sometimes students will share things uh, uh, more so with their parents or not but what were their biggest challenges for them on their side going away? Yeah, so I think a couple things that they have shared and that I noticed too is, you know, one of the biggest things is that um, you're suddenly independent in pretty much everything when you go off to college. Um, and so you're handling all those details of everyday life, you know, things like getting yourself up, deciding when to go to bed, you know, deciding where you're going to study, when you're going to study, if you're going to study, um, what you're going to eat, when you're going to eat. Um, you know, a lot of times in different families, um, the parents are going out and buying the groceries and the food. So even if you're eating at different times or, you, you know, you're not sitting down for dinner together, there's healthy food in there and it's available to you. In college, suddenly, you're getting to choose what you eat and there's all kinds of, you know, um, options open. Um, you're learning how to take care of yourself. You know, if you're not feeling well or you get that first cold or you get the flu, you know, for many uh, teens, their parents are there to kind of help and remind them and rest or call your teacher and let them know you're sick today. Um, managing your money, you know, and figuring that out things like doing your laundry, cleaning your room. Maybe some of you are already doing that, hopefully. Um, for others, that's an adjustment because they weren't used to doing that. Um, keeping track of all your assignments and your calendar and your sports, if you're doing that, or extracurricular. I think that was a challenge. Um, my students, my own kids are pretty independent, but some of those things like the meals or just all of a sudden it's all on you, I think all together, that can be a challenge. Um, the other thing that both of them kind of said to me, and I remember, and it's, I think, good for parents to know, and also um, for those of you going off to college, is you've spent all this time senior year deciding which school to be at, and you get there, and those first couple days, they're giving you all this different information. They're helping you find your way around campus. There's oftentimes orientation programs. There's new friends to meet and roommates. And it's wonderful. A lot of times it's filled with like really great stuff, fun stuff. But everything is new. You know, you're, you're meeting new people. You're living in a new place. You're figuring out how to study at college and it can be overwhelming. So even though it's really good and exciting, I remember a couple times that my kids were like, oh, I'm just like overwhelmed because there's this orientation and there's these new friends and I want to go here and, you know, I got to go and get my bank account set up. And so just knowing that, I think, and being ready for that feeling it's not going to last forever but that first month or two you're going to be like inundated with all kinds of new things so just take it one step at a time this is is new and it's great you'll get there and everything will be you know kind of routine after a while and so just think about back when you started high school you know it probably felt so like foreign to you and all those things you had to learn about coming to Hersey or whatever, you know, it's the same way in college. So I would just say, find some times that you can 
find a quiet spot by yourself. You know, when you're ready to call home and talk to your parents, um, find a quiet space where you can do that. Um, the other big thing I think is in terms of parents and communication with teachers, professors, college, at college, I mean, it's really the student is doing all of that. The student is communicating with their professors and their person who lives in the dorm and their roommates. And while hopefully as parents, we've prepared them along the way to do that and we've slowly kind of backed off from stepping in, I will say it is hard because it's a lot sometimes for a 18, 19 year old person to do. And so as a parent, I think um, what's helpful is when your student calls up and they're really upset about a class or something in their schedule or something that happened with their roommate, it's really easy as a parent to want to jump in and fix it and say, do you want me to call the English department or do you want me to reach out and talk to the RA? It's not your job to do that anymore. And that can be hard. But I find the best thing is to, to listen, to listen to your student and to show them you care, like, oh my gosh, that sounds so hard. You know, what do you think you could do about that? And so kind of asking them the question, but again, putting it on them, like, how do you think you might handle that? How can I, as your parent, best support you in talking to your roommate about that? rather than, you know, jumping in and wanting to fix it. And I know that as parents, we do that out of love, but this is a chance where it's really, it's on them now. And that can be hard um, for parents. One of the things I learned, and this was really, really helpful to me, is that after a week or two, maybe it's a month, um, sometime in that first month, you'll usually get a phone call where your student is like kind of down, you know, like for my daughter, it's like she called and she's crying and she goes on and on and on about, and this happened and this happened and I'm not sure about this. And, you know, I'm not sure that this should be my major. And they put all this stuff on you. And then it's like, okay, mom, I got to run. And you get off the phone. And as the mom, you're like, oh my gosh, we made the wrong decision. She does it like her school? And, you know, is this roommate horrible? Well, it's helpful to know your kid is probably off having a great old time. You know, I would text my daughter the next morning. Oh, you sounded so bad last night. Is everything fine? And she's like, oh yeah, mom, I'm great. And so I think somebody said to me, you know, it's that familiar voice, your mom or your dad, and they call you and they kind of dump all this stuff. And then they feel great. They're like, okay, good. Now I can go back out and, you know, handle the world. I think it's good as a parent to know this is normal. They're going to be okay. Don't jump in and talk about transferring to a new school. I think every student at some point during that first semester maybe wonders when they're having a bad day, I made the wrong decision. Give it some time. And so seniors too, you know, Give it some time. It's a big adjustment, you know, take that time. Everybody feels a little out of sorts, especially that first semester. It's okay to feel that way, but don't rush and make any, you know, big decisions. Everyone kind of gets that homesick feeling. Um, and I would say to the teenagers, to the seniors, once in a while, I'll just send your mom or dad a text with like something good. Like, hey, I met this great new friend today, or we had fun playing football on the quad. Your parents love you. They want to know what's going on. And sometimes as parents, we kind of get the phone calls or the texts when things aren't going well. So once in a while, send them a note about something that really went well. That's helpful for your parents too. So hopefully that I gave you a lot there, but those are some challenges that um, I know my students face and then also from a parent perspective how that felt to me yeah great great insight great uh advice and and tips you know the very practical things uh i do want to add before i just go to our last question um as someone who commuted myself personally i commuted from my house so 
I didn't go away, but I do remember a lot of these things um, feeling the same way, feeling, you know, did I make the right choice or, you know, I was an athlete and so, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm not good enough or I, I shouldn't do this, I should quit, like I want to go back to high school, like all these different feelings, even though, you know, I, I lived, you know, at, at home, it still can be a big, you know, transition and your schedule can change so dramatically as even as a commuter student, and then some of these um, conversations and, and things that we've talked about that, and suggestions that you've made, um, I think can be also work, even if you're staying at home, you know, when are you going to be home? You know, you may not be eating dinner with your family at six o'clock every night because you may still be on campus or you may uh, have a class, you know, so communicating, you know, those changes um, as well. And and students having that, you know, kind of negotiate with your parents, you know, okay, yes, I do still live at home. I live under your roof. You are, you know, you, you still make the rules, but this is a time for increased independence. So, um, you know, how can you work on that? How can you still be, become more independent, um, still do, you know, some of the things that maybe you would do if you were, you know, not living at home, like go out at certain times or certain things, but yet, uh, respect the rules of your parents' house, you know, at the same time. So uh, also important conversations and, and things to have because your your day-to-day -day is going to be very different, you know. And, um, I remember, you know, some days leaving um, my house to drive downtown to, uh, to DePaul at, you know, 7 a.m. or earlier. And if I had a night class, I wouldn't be home till 10 p.m. Um, you may not even see your family that whole day. So um, it's going to look different in that way too. And that can cause stress. I know my mom was stressed about me driving on the highway every day and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So um, I just want to throw that out there. If there are students who are commuting, whether you're commuting 10 minutes away or, or 10 miles away or, or more, um, a lot of these things are applicable too, for sure. So um, just wanted to throw that out there. So uh, lastly, <laughs> um, Mrs. Not. um, any final tips for um, students or parents as they approach like this summer before college and then ultimately the start of next year? Any other, like you've mentioned a lot of outstanding things to do. Anything else, any other like maybe final tips or advice that you would recommend that might help with this, you know, transition and, and have everybody going off on this next phase of their life, you know, feeling good and, and happy about the situation? Yeah, I think, um, you know, just like I kind of mentioned at the beginning, um, this is a big step and it's okay to have those mixed feelings. And you probably from now until the time you leave, you'll feel one way and then another and another. And just know that I think both for students and parents, it's completely normal. And so I think you know, being easy on each other, um, you know, tell each other, I love you, you know, you've done awesome in high school, I'm gonna miss you. Um, plan some kind of fun things together, you know, parents, maybe take a couple of your favorite recipes and, and show your students and do that with them. Um, seniors, you know, whether you think you're gonna miss your parents or not, you might. Um, many students do and they're surprised by that. I know my oldest is very independent, kind of ready to go. And she got her wisdom teeth pulled the summer right before she left for college. And you know, you're a lot of people get put under. And so you're kind of coming in and out and you have this medicine in your system. And I remember my daughter, who's not real emotional, kind of saying, mom and dad, I'm really going to miss you. And I was like, she said it. She said she's, she's going to miss us. And then her brother, like, I'm really going to miss Jack and, you know, and I think like there is that realization um, that you will miss each other and that's okay, you know, so tell each other that teenagers thank your parents for everything you've done. Parents just remind your students they can do this, you know, they have had a lot of success in high school. Um, you're going to be there and it's okay, whatever you're feeling, you're excited, you're anxious. That's, it's all okay. Um, the other thing I just think is, you know, as parents over the course of the summer, um, 
try to sort of give the students that independence and you know if they need to make a doctor's appointment or they need to make a haircut or do those things have them do it on their own because if they haven't been it's good practice in those you know these next you know five six months to have that be doing it i know it's easy as a parent just to think oh you know susie's busy so i'll call and make that appointment for her but when they're off at school, they're really going to have to be doing that on their own. So giving them that chance. Um, the last thing I would just say is, um, you know, as a parent, one of the things that I found very helpful to me and was recommended by this residence life director was taking some time as a parent um, just to sit down and she kind of recommended writing a little like I wrote a handwritten letter to my um, daughter and son when they left. And just kind of sharing with them that, you know, I loved them, I was proud of them, um, I would miss them, but I knew they would do it at school, that I was here, kind of reminding them of some of those things. And I sort of wrote it, it was very helpful for me as a parent, but then I sort of packed it in something that they had left and they could find it at some point after I left school. And just know that it's, um, it's an exciting time and there's a lot of mixed emotions, but it's a wonderful time too. And I'm, I'm hoping for all of you, the seniors um, and the parents that you kind of enjoy and celebrate these last couple months, but also your time in the summer and wishing you all the best. Great. Thank you so much, Ms. Nod, for all your insight. And of course, she's uh, also a great resource here at the school. So feel free to reach out to her students and parents and um, we will help you all through this process uh, for sure. And I can't wait to hear from um, you when you even when you graduate and how things are going. And so stay in touch with us and thank you for joining us, Mrs. Knott. Thanks so much, have a good day. Joining me right now is Meg Hammes, the Director of Counseling Services at Luther College. Meg, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, it's nice to be here. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your background, and what you do in your role there at Luther College? Sure. Um, I am the Director of Counseling Services here on campus, um, which just means that I uh, provide support to a staff of five mental health counselors, um, and we provide mental health counseling services to students on campus. Um, my background is uh, school-based mental health and community-based mental health. So this is actually my, uh, I'm my anniversary year, my 30th year of providing mental health services in some setting or another. Um, and this is uh, my sixth year here at Luther College. Um, I'm a licensed um, mental health uh, counselor with a master's degree in social work and um, also have a certification in trauma and trauma supports. Um, all of our providers here at Luther are licensed at the highest level for their um, degree, and uh, we provide a variety of services, which I can kind of talk about in a little bit. Great. Thank you so much for that background. So um, I know this year has been anything but typical, uh, but in a typical year, um, whatever that might, might mean at this point, what are some of the biggest concerns or issues that students come to uh, counseling services for, especially freshmen, is that's the focus of our presentation. Absolutely. Um, really, when we are starting out our year, um, we tend to see uh, first years coming. And a lot of times it's about those transitions. Um, and what are some of the things that they're needing to be able to adjust to being away from home, um, not being able to walk through their um, uh, uh, parents or caregivers door every day, um, being able to adjust to having a roommate. So many times, so often a lot of students are joining us where they have had their own room, um, their own bathroom even, and now they're in a communal living setting. Um, so being able to start to adjust to that um, roommate uh, concerns, and then being able to really navigate some homesickness. 
Um, we take homesickness <laughs> really seriously um, on campus um, and uh, really want to be able to make sure that those first uh, few weeks that students are feeling comfortable, that they're feeling connected, um, that they know where to go to get supports, and most importantly for our first years that they know it's okay to ask for support. Um, it's something that we really want to, to reiterate. We try to meet with all of our first years as they come in through orientation um, to come into our office, get to know our space, get to know who we are. Um, and our, really our goal within our office is to really reduce any barriers regarding accessing support and asking for help. Um, outside of those transitions for first years, a lot of times then it is also some just some anxiousness um, and maybe some um, mood kinds of pieces. A lot of times students have had some great positive coping skills that they've used at home, um, but don't necessarily transfer those skills over to a college setting. Um, so uh, being able to navigate uh, just that level of, of anxiousness that they may be experiencing and that general transition is kind of what we see in those first few months um, with our, our first year students. Great, yeah, a lot, a lot. Definitely, you want to get off to a good start, and and some of those things are are very, um, you know, common as I'm sure you mentioned. I know I've worked with students in the past who are like, oh, I, I want to come home every day now. It's like, well, wait a minute, you put a lot of time and you know effort into making your choice, and of course, you want to stay there and and make the best of it. So, um, great, you know, advice too to to make sure you meet people, ask for help. You know, we, we've heard that a few. Uh, times as well from uh, some of our other interviews in this presentation. So um, with this last year too, with things being remote, uh, I'm not sure how much remote or, or not um, your campus was, but um, if there was some part of that, have you seen any differences, any um, changes in the concerns that students have had, anything becoming more prevalent uh, because of, of the remote environment? Yeah, I, you know, one of the things that um, I think that we have really talked about in our, our setting is, um, uh, unfortunately, it's not uncommon for students to feel a little bit isolated, um, particularly first years in that transition. Um, and this year that has just been a little bit more pronounced, um, folks feeling a little bit less connected to campus. Um, there just hasn't been those natural settings to be able to stay up till two o'clock at night with the other folks on your floor to be able to get to know each other and be able to connect and, and, and feel that connected or even go into to sporting events or music events. There just hasn't been those opportunities. Um, so particularly for our first years, I think um, really feeling a heightened level of um, disconnection, um, a level of of isolation. Um, one of the things that I think about, and I have a first year student myself this year and come kind of thinking about their experience, you know, first years don't know what they don't know, right? And so um, I think uh, for, for some of our first years, um, that transition um, hasn't been as difficult as maybe we thought it was going to be. Um, that sense of isolation and loneliness may be there, um, but they also, don't necessarily have some of that level of grief that some of our upperclassmen um, might have regarding, oh, I wish I could do this, or oh, I wish I could do that again. So that's been something that we've kind of navigated a little bit. Um, for us, our services have been all telehealth um, this year. Um, that honestly has been something more for us to get to be, to be familiar with and for us. Um, folks uh, who are maybe a little bit older uh, to be able to get a little bit more comfortable with where students seem to navigate that um, really well. And I've been surprised that students have said that sometimes they prefer um, some of that telehealth uh, um, versus being able to come in person. I think that that has been one thing that has reduced barriers for students to access services, um, has been a little bit more comfortable for them to be in their space and work with us versus coming into our office. Um, so that has informed us as far as our practice going forward. We're going to do a little bit of a hybrid um, to be able to meet both of those uh, kinds of, of needs um, and really being able to help support students in, um, uh, again, knowing that it's okay to ask for help, um, knowing that uh, that transition is, is challenging, that they don't need to do it on their own. 
um, that they can get the supports on campus, whether it's academic support or through our office, um, that there's a wide variety of folks who are here specifically to help them be to, to be successful at school. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of the um, the situations are the same that you know we're seeing in high school too. Some are doing really great, some aren't so, some prefer one way, some prefer the other. So I think it will be interesting both at the high school and college level, you'll see um, whether it's teachers, counselors, you know, variety of people kind of tweaking or keeping some of the hybrid or, or, or whatnot. But uh, I guess the bottom line is that students, whatever they feel comfortable with, they should hopefully feel comfortable reaching out one of those ways and accessing those resources. Um, so you kind of mentioned coping skills, you know, a little bit earlier as well. So what kinds of, and we'll, it'll be interesting to see, I think too, you know, will those coping skills that are needed or those situations be delayed, you know, a couple of years, like when those right. you know, first years now all of a sudden have roommate, you know, if they weren't on campus, you know, maybe it'll just be delayed or kind of reversed, but in general, I guess, what kinds of coping skills do you and your staff um, find students need the most help with? And they're, they're not prepared as much, maybe out of high school to deal with what? Right, for sure. One of the first things that comes to mind is just setting um, and sometimes readjusting expectations. Um, so often students are coming in with um, having experienced a lot of academic success um, and then moving into an environment where it's it's just different. There are different study skills that are needed. There are different um, interactions that are needed. Um, students are really uh, on their own to be able to navigate some of those things um, and so um, being able to help them uh, uh, go and reach out to faculty if they're feeling anxious about that, um, again, asking for help um, is, is such an important piece with, with, with that. Um, and being able to really adjust that um, expectation of I'm going to get all A's to a B or a C is just okay. Um, it's okay. And uh, your GPA will recover if, you're, if you have that goal of a, of a higher GPA. Um, and really adjusting to kind of what is academics at a higher ed level um, is something that we talk to students about. Um, and then sometimes it's social anxiety, um, meeting friends, um, not being able to kind of figure out how to navigate that. Some students have had a, a, a set of friends that they've navigated through middle school and high school with, and that hasn't needed to change. Um, and then they're coming to a new environment where, again, that is something that they have to kind of try to figure out. So helping them understand that um, those relationships are going to ebb and flow and change, and that's okay. That's very typical. Um, and that uh, if you don't feel like you've met your person those first few weeks, it'll be okay. Um, and you will continue to, to, to meet more folks along, along the way. Um, so again, uh, again, some of that anxiousness around some of that social, social stuff. Um, a lot of times coping skills have to do with um, being able to go take a bath or um, burn some candles or um, go take a walk wherever they want to. And um, sometimes folks have to change their coping skills a little bit um, uh, where bathtubs aren't available or burning candles aren't something that we really promote in a residential in a residential setting. Um, we really like to uh, promote mindfulness and meditation um, through our office, being able to provide programs like um, nature bathing or meditation uh, skill development, um, anxiety toolbox on how to navigate some of that anxious stuff. Um, so those are some of the coping skills that we that we kind of talk about. Great. Yeah, that's, those all sound like really interesting ideas. I think maybe sometimes, you know, students hear those buzzwords like, oh, meditation, but to provide like practical, you know, skills is, is a great, um, is a great thing to, to know that they can access, you know, some of those, some of those specifics. So um, for sure. Okay. Lastly, any final advice um, that you might have on how students can best prepare themselves for uh, this transition mentally, emotionally? Um, as well as when they get to college, you know, you mentioned some things, um, what else they can do while they're here or anything else they can do while they're at college to stay mentally, uh, emotionally, and even physically healthy. 
Absolutely. Um, you know, all of those components, um, all of those wellness features are, are really important. Um, I, I really think that a lot of that is having those conversations with, with caregivers, parents, um, uh, any of those important adults in uh, students' lives to be able to um, be open about here, here's kind of what I'm navigating, here's the kind of supports that I need um, for parents to be able to really understand the level of stress that students are under right now. Um, college is not the same as when I went to college, right? Like it, it's just not as stressful. The world just isn't as stressful as it, as it, as it used to be. Um, so being able to check in with your student, um, knowing that both Luther and most institutions have um, what we call kind of a, a care team. So if parents or caregivers are ever concerned about their student, that they can call campus, that they can call whether it's their counseling center, they can call their student development office on a campus and say, I'm worried about my student. I want you to reach out. Um, so we always want, uh, want parents to be able to know that and students to know that as well. Um, really being able to have some of those difficult conversations. Um, I sent Christopher a guide a little bit ago um, from the Jed Foundation. Um, Jed Foundation is a, is a national organization that works to reduce stigma and works to reduce, um, help promote um, positive behavior and reduce suicidality. They have some great resource guides on their website as far as some, some, some planning kinds of things for coming to school. Um, so being able to, to have some of those difficult conversations, what are, what are parents' expectations, what are students' expectations about um, money, social, social relationships, substance use, um, grades, all of those kinds of, all of those pieces. Great. Yes. Thank you so much. It's, it's great to know that, you know, um, that there are these services out there and we try to tell students to take advantage of all, all the resources, all the amenities that the colleges have. They're paying for those. So whether it's yeah. counseling, whether it's academic advising, whether it's the fitness center, nutri you know, all those things to, to really take advantage of those. And of course, to reach out. So Meg, thank you so much for sharing uh, all of the great advice today, and we're going to share those resources with our students and families as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. For more frequent reminders, updates, resources, and more, please follow us on social media at Life After Hersey and subscribe to my YouTube page.